Okay, welcome everybody to a new uh, segment where we solve another question for the FE exam. But uh, it doesn't have to be a FE exam, it can be preparation for your midterm or final examination if you're taking a fluid mechanics course. Okay, um, the first thing I want to highlight is when I look at this week's uh, video versus that last week's video, it may seem the same. Okay, looking at the geometry, it may seem like the same. I g I'll give you two options. Option one is that I run out of questions, I am solving the exact same question. Or option two is that you're not really reading the question just yet, you're getting to the conclusion too soon. And I would go with option number two. So let's go ahead and read the question. Here's what it says, water flows in a 90 degree bend with a velocity of 2 meters per second. Okay, The downstream discharges the atmosphere as a jet. So you can see downstream is over here and I'm stating to you that the pressure gauge wise is going to be 0 pascal over here. That's what it says. Um, again, please read the question very carefully. So the question is asking what is the horizontal and vertical components of the force flow exerts on the bend. So I'm asking you what is the forces that is exerted on this bend due to the existence of a flow, right? And I gave you the options over here so you can go over it, okay? And I want to highlight that this question can be solved by looking at this equation that exists on page 186 of the FE exam manual, 10th edition, okay? Um, but I will not use that, you, you're more than welcome to use this too, okay? Okay, the first step is to really uh, look at the, 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 the velocity 1 and velocity 2 in a way that the velocity 1 will be equal to velocity 2 and I'm going to ask you why that is and you will most likely will answer me saying that hey, because of the conservation of mass and that will be accurate, okay? So my velocities will be the same on this band due to the diameter being the constant, okay? The next thing is that um, if I go out and do the conservation of momentum or impulse momentum to find my uh, forces, right? Because that's the only for uh, that's the only equation that gives me a force. You will be able to see that there is something missing over here, and that will be the pressure one. Okay, and I want to highlight uh, the FE exam also uses this. This means that this is open to atmosphere. Okay, this kind of cross section. This kind of cross section indicates that there's some kind of a pressure over here. Okay. So then I have to go out and find this pressure before I go out and find my forces, okay? That will be the first uh, step. The first step will be the Bernoulli's equation because that's the only really equation that I can take advantage of to find my pressure right over here, okay? So I'm going to call this P1. Now let's go ahead and write it and we'll, we'll um, you know, assess together. V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 will be equal to P2 over rho plus V2 squared over 2 plus gz2, right? Um, and again, you need to be careful by not uh, conflicting with the um, question statement because the Bernoulli's equation has a bunch of different assumptions integrated to it, such as a loss, like uh, if, uh, you know, loss is not zero, then you cannot use this equation, okay? All right, so let's look at P1. Well, that's what I'm trying to assess, so that is a question mark. Density is just a number. Let's look at V1 and V2. Well, I just uh, find out that V1 is equal to V2. I don't even have to write the 2 down, down here, right? Um, GZ1. So now I have to find a datum. And I'm going to set my datum to be here. You don't have to. The final answer is independent of where you put the datum. But I will be kind of lazy so that I can have one of the Z values to be 0. And you can see over here, as I datum is assigned over here, this will be gone. Okay? But note that my Z2 now will be this distance that is given to me. So that is 0 0.8 meters, okay? And P2, what is P2? Um, well, P2 is zero, if I'm using gauge terminology, right? So that's gone. And so from here, actually, do you, you come up with an equation that is quite familiar to you. It is gonna be rho g times z. We, we used to call this h when I was doing the previous uh, segments, but that's what it is. So from here, you, I can find my pressure like this. So density will be right around 1,000, right? kilogram per meter cube, then I'm going to multiply this by 9.81 meter per second square, right? Then I'm going to multiply by 0 0.8, that's given to me, 0 0.8 meter, right? So you can see from here that I'm going to get my P1 to be, I need to find this to my calculator, and when I do, I get myself 7,848 pascals, okay? So if there's no loss, this will be the pressure. And in reality, this value will be higher because the loss is always something, right? Um, so this is the bare minimum value of pressure I need to generate. Anyways, that's beyond the scope over here. Then, now I feel comfortable to proceed with finding the forces. And the first thing I will do is let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of this 
Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not really uh, going for a, a competition in drawing, but um, it needs to be workable, obviously. So I have my P1A1. I always start with this because I don't want to forget that. P2A2 uh, will be here and it will be pointing down if P2 was not zero. In this particular case, it is zero, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, the weight of the control volume. Looking at the weight of the control volume, I am not given enough information to find the volume of the water within the band. So then I, I'm simply going to neglect it because there, there is no other way, right? If I was given the information, for instance, last week I gave you that information, I gave you the volume, so we used it. Right now I don't have it. What can I do? I'm not going to use it, okay? Um, and then I'm going to have, you know, like f of x is negative of what the question is asking me and I will have an f of y. Obviously, my in this particular question too, just like last time, I'm using a traditional uh, Cartesian coordinates where we have x and y indicating this way, right? Then I will first start with the horizontal because that's what the choices are, right? So let's start with the horizontal. In the horizontal, I'll have this. The, so the summation of the forces in the x will be equal to uh, summation over the exits rho v x exit v n exit a exit minus rho v x inlet v n inlet a inlet then i simply punch the numbers in so this this left hand side will come from here so you can see i got myself p1 a1 plus f of x i should have used r of x over here but that doesn't really matter you know one thing i want to highlight is when i have the v x exit so that's going to be two right so looking here it's be like this the component of that in the x direction will be zero, right? So I'm not going to have any of these exit terms. So because the exit is two, inlet is one. So I don't have to worry about this term. So that's gone. And then I'll get myself a negative of rho is thousand up there. I already write it. So I'm not going to write units anymore. The, the, the velocity in the x is going to be two. That's what's given to me in the question statement. Vn is going to be two, two, right? And the area will be pi 0 0.1 square. So then... Um, uh, if I proceed with calculating this, you're going to see that my f of x will be equal to minus about 4,000 4, times uh, 0 0.1. So that's going to be minus 40 pi. And my p1 was, what was it, 7848. And the a is the same pi, 0 0.1 square, right? Pi r squared. So then this will be minus uh, plus 7.78.48 pi, right? That's what I get over here. So you can see this as well. Um, if I punch this into my calculator, I'll get it right around 372, obviously negative, um, 0.2 newtons, right? Um, I mentioned this last week too, but this is not the force that I'm asking. This is the force that is applied to the flow from the bend. But I'm asking you, what is the force that the flow exerts on the bend? And again, the same thing as last week conversation, you need to think a little bit about that. So if I had this, what will happen is in reality, if the flow hits here, this is going to roll to the right, right? So the force needs to be in the positive direction. So then the force that actually I'm asking you is plus this, okay? So looking at the choices that I have, so I get rid of uh, choice A, which is not accurate, and choice D, I still have B and C to work with, okay? All right. So then the next is to go with the, you know, Y direction. So we can write this over here, Fy, same thing, wherever I see X in the question above, I write y, which is not a big deal. Rho, v y exit, v n exit, a exit, minus rho, v y inlet, v n inlet, a inlet, and this is inlet 2. So then looking at my free beta diagram, you will see that I only have f y, or I want to call it r y, but it's too late now, um, will be equal to the exits wise, it's going to be 1000, v y exit so looking at the exit exit is this way y is that way so it's going to be plus uh, 2 so that's what it is v1 e is 2 area is pi 0 0.1 square okay and i'm not going to make it long over here and looking at this term v y inlet v inlet is this way the component of a vector velocities are vectors um, in the y direction will be zero so i don't have to worry about it so you know straight out this is will be my answer Okay, and looking at this, so I will get my Fy to be uh, a positive value. You can see here this time, so 1000, uh, 4040 pi. So that will be, you know, right around 125 plus uh, newtons. Okay, 
but looking at the choices I'll go to the same point that I made and that was that you know if I put this in a roller what will happen is this is gonna go down right it's gonna shoot down if this was on a roll obviously I don't need to have these to confuse you but uh, so for that reason this is gonna be a negative of what I obtained and you can see that the choice was E this one okay thank you for watching this lecture video hopefully it helped you